Welcome. It is Health Hacks with Mark L. White. I'm Rusty Humphreys. He's Mark L. White. We also got a great guest here today. Uh, Mark, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. And, uh, of course, Health Hacks is a program about what? It's about sharing with everyone all the exciting, cutting-edge stuff that Big Pharma and Big Food doesn't want you to know about. Like the stuff that's going to help us live to be 120 and be healthy at the same time. So Stanford Graham is here, and he's kind of one of those experts you're talking about, right? Yeah, I actually met Stanford uh, about a month and a half ago at CHS, Consumer Health Summit, and he's the CEO of Elements for Athletes. And I thought it was, um, he was one of the first guys I met out there, and he has an amazing story and an amazing health hack. Stan, welcome to the program. What What is it that you do? Mark knows all about you, but we don't. Tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and what is the, what this health hack is. Yeah, Rusty, thanks for the welcome. I'm glad to be here. The health hack is uh, remarkably simple, although uh, strangely absent in our, uh, in our lives here. That's uh, simply uh, ready access to whole foods clean whole foods that are combined in meals that are gut friendly, uh, nutrient dense and bioavailable. Yeah. You know, what was interesting, um, Stan, when I met you was you told me that you were an attorney and (laughs) it's so rare to see attorneys have that midlife crisis and decide to do something else. Tell me about that. Yeah. The, uh, Yeah, my crisis came really as a function of injury. Uh, I was coming out of some shoulder repair surgery that had failed a few times. And I've I've been an active active guy all my life. I've trained five, six days a week since high school. That's just been my lifestyle. Um, These surgeries really put me in a bad situation, coming close to losing the use of one of my arms and uh, not being able to train. uh, for several months put me in a, 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 a bad place or some other personal stuff that was going on. But eventually, coming out of this dark, uh, a dark period of my life, I, uh, one of the goals I had set for myself was uh, as I began uh, coming out of this uh, period, I actually began to walk and run as a way of um, self-medication, for instance. Uh-huh. And uh, I discovered that my running times were improving. And so I set a goal. Uh, just uh, somewhat arbitrarily one night that uh, I was going to take a look at what it would take to break, uh, to run a four minute mile. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was uh, 52 years old. Wow. And uh, I just figured, look, you know, Bannister ran a, he broke a four minute mile barrier. Uh, A race is a succession of uh, finite, a finite number of steps. And if he could do it, I could do it. Um, I got into training, uh, began to pursue that, uh, found out that the world record for the, for the mile for men's 50 and over, you know, the 50 year old men and over that the, the world record for that distance, the mile was four minutes, 28.9 seconds okay. at that time. And so I said, well, I'm going to look on my way to four minutes. I'm going to break that too. So I started pursuing that. And as a consequence of that, uh, really dialing in that uh, type of training, um, getting a professional coach, I learned just how exacting nutrition was. Uh-huh. That in order to perform very high, yeah, at very high levels physically, you, you've got to nail your nutrition. Anybody can train, but the success of your training is a function of your nutrition and your recovery. So if you don't, if you don't feed your body and you don't recover, which two things hang together, you can go ahead and train however you want. You're not going to get... Uh, you know, you're going to compromise the, the consequences of your training perpetually and open yourself up to injury. So that's really what stared me from lawyer work to really what was my passion, which has been nutrition anyway. So you walked away from your career as an attorney. Were you scared? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there I had it had uh, I'd been in the profession for decades and had done well, but there was a there was a definite point. Uh, of um, inflection Mm -hmm. in my life where uh, I wanted to, it was clear that I needed to do something different and uh, give me, you know, I had an opportunity to uh, start another chapter of my life. 
Now you're talking about you were a runner. Um, I've been a runner too for a long time. Um, and now four minute mile, I can drive that really no problem. <laughs> um, were you, were you, were you able to get close to that? I mean, that's, I mean, I'll be honest. I'm a nine and a half, 10 minute runner and you know, but I also don't want to get hurt. Um, I'm guessing running that fast at that age was not real good for your body or maybe I'm wrong. Rusty, the body is a fun, you know, the human body is a phenomenal, um, is a phenomenal, um, piece of equipment and work of art and, uh, is capable of doing remarkable things. Much of what we, uh, much of the limitations we face physically are really a function of what we think mentally. Um, so yeah, it's hard. Uh, a four minute mile. I'm not there yet. My fastest mile right now is just a little over four thirty-two, four minutes and 32 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a couple of seconds off that world record pace, uh, which I'll be make, you know, I'll be able to make that up. Uh, I've scheduled, I've, uh, I've calendared to, to get this done this fall. Um, so, uh, hopefully we'll have some positive news coming out in October. You know, but, once I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, but I've seen that Russ is right. I mean, the, the, the fact that uh, taxing your body performing at that level, um, you do risk injury cause you're really pushing the, uh, the limits of, uh, of your physical capacities, but, uh, the body can adapt. You can train it to do very fabulous. You can train it to do remarkable things. If you, if you give it what it needs, and I'll tell you, Mark, one of the things I've learned in Rusty as well is that your body, the older we get, the less tolerant it is of lies. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't feed your body crap and expect to get something good out of it. What's, know, wrong with, what's wrong with the food that we're currently eating now? Well, a lot of that, uh, let's look at sources, Mark. We can break down sources. Where do we get our food? You know, what uh there is a uh, a diet called the american diet i think uh, we're we are maybe all somewhat familiar with that that uh, involves a lot of uh, edible products that aren't necessarily food you don't you don't pick nothing that you would get from the direct kill of an animal or you know harvesting uh fruits and vegetables I mean, products that are highly processed but edible filled with additives and preservatives, colors, flavors, whatever those are, uh, chemicals that we can't describe. And in fact, you know, the, uh, even the regulations we have in this country that are required or excused from being put on ingredient labels is a, is a mystery. I mean, it's uh, the regulatory uh, volumes that I've had to read just in, in building this line of products of natural, whole, organic, grass fed, you know, food is, uh, has been a bit of an exercise, but it, the food that we have available, Mark, um, just isn't the best. Like it's, for example, quite, when you go to McDonald's, which number do you prefer? Do you like the number one, the yeah. number two? <laughs> yeah, there you go. But I mean, to you is like everything McDonald's, unless it's like super, you know, get your elements.com stuff. I mean, is, when do you go to any restaurants? Sure. I mean, eating out is not uh, prohibitive, uh, but you become aware, really aware of what you, you know, what you put in your mouth, what food you consume. Uh, some of the challenges we have with our current food supply chain is that we're provided food, the source of which we don't, we don't know. We don't know how it's been handled. We have no idea what, uh, under what conditions it was grown or under what conditions it was processed. There is zero transparency. Even getting a plate of food at a restaurant, you have no idea unless you're sitting at a diner and watching the cook, you know, and the chef do their work. You have no idea what's gone on to make that food, what the conditions are uh, from the person preparing it to the equipment used. So lack of transparency is a big issue. Lack of knowledge of sourcing of the food. Where does it come from? I mean, a lot of our cucumbers come from uh, Egypt. But uh, we have no idea of what the growing conditions in Egypt are. I can tell you that they don't have an EPA over there, you know, regulating what they spray on. Yeah, what are you worried about? So what it's in Egypt? Egypt seems like a nice place. Yeah, it is. They, just, uh, they use uh, toxins and poisons, you know, to control past, uh, as pesticides and herbicides, et cetera. You know, so do we here in the United States, right? 
Um, uh, we use uh, we use pesticides and herbicides that are actually carcinogens that are highly toxic to the human body. And there are some lawsuits that have just happened. Uh, talking about lawyers, there are lawsuits that have culminated just in the last within the last year against some very large uh, pharma food big food companies mm -hmm. um, that you know uh, um, in terms of liability for using products on plants that. Uh, that are highly poisonous and, and very destructive to the human body. So again, uh, where food comes from and uh, the conditions under which it's raised, the soil conditions, those kinds of things are all issues. I'm not suggesting that we have to be paranoid about it, but we need to be aware of what we're eating and where it comes from. You know, as a person who likes to watch what I eat, you know, I go to Whole Foods, I make sure that everything is mm -hmm. Great and all, but what I have a lot of problems with is prepping food. And I know competitive athletes that will sure. spend their Sunday afternoon prepping. I mean, I'd rather be boating. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know about about you, but was that what led to elements? Um, like, like how did you go about that to making a better mouse mousetrap? Yeah, let me to to tie these two stories together of leaving a law practice uh, training to break a world record in, in starting a, a, a whole food uh, company. Um, yeah, the need for the nutrition, Mark, the need to have a uh, precise meals in terms of macronutrients. You know, macronutrients, we've got, we've got proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as you know, um, fiber is the fourth macronutrient, but... Uh, really the three primary ones are those, the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And I wanted those in specific proportions. I wanted those from specific sources. I wanted, for instance, my proteins to come from grass-raised animals. I mean, animals that actually eat what they're supposed to rather than being fed on um, high-volume corn uh, or other body parts of other animals. I mean, that's, you know, cows aren't uh, uh, carnivorous, but they're fed bone meal, those kinds of things. Uh, same thing with fowl, you know, with turkey or chicken, uh, those kinds of things. I wanted, I, I grew up on a small farm. I wanted animals that were actually eating what they're supposed to eat uh, to be a source of uh, protein. And then uh, in terms of vegetables, I, I wanted the source of uh, my carbohydrates to be strictly um, high octane vegetables, uh, high in polyphenols, colorful vegetables uh, that, that have a high concentration of uh, minerals, nutrients, and uh, and uh, phytochemicals. And then fats, I just wanted high quality fats, coconut fat, avocado uh, fat. Um, but getting those specific, the, those specific groupings of food that are very clean, organically raised, et cetera, and, and put in a meal together with a, in a composition of, you know, uh, um, volume of, of protein to carb to fat, you, you can look, but you just couldn't find it. I, I got tired. I, I hauled a food bag around for decades, hmm. national, international travel, you know, intra-city travel. Um, I had plenty of people making fun of me. A lot of my the lawyers knew that I was the food bag guy. And so uh, anyway, I decided to make what I couldn't find, Mark. Well, how do you get it? How do you get it to taste good? I mean, when I was little, I used to go to Nassau and eat that freeze dried ice yeah. cream, which is probably the most processed <laughs> food you could think of. So when you told me you have these freeze dried meals in a bag, mm. I was expecting that, but instead I got something that tasted almost gourmet. Like, how do you do that? Right. This is one of the, the points you make. I appreciate you making the point. The, the food that we prepare is freeze dried. Um, and we do that for a reason. T making it taste good is both science and art. You know, I, I work uh, directly myself. These are my recipes, and I work directly with our food scientists to just nail the taste as well as the nutrition uh, value. So the, um, we chose, I chose the freeze-drying uh, technology because it's the best preservation, nutrition preservation technology on the planet. And that would also free me from uh, refrigerators, free me from microwaves, and any other kind of apparatus like that so that I could choose to eat what I wanted to wherever I was. And that was kind of the freedom I wanted. But making that taste good, that's, uh, that's some real work. 
So, so when you travel now, do you bring your, instead of a bag, carrying a bag of hot foods or whatever, tell me about that. Like, well, so I, I sent you some food, right? You did. And, uh, you can see some of the bags up here, these meals behind us. We have nine meals right now. Um, they're very lightweight between 60 to 72, uh, grams. Um, so you can, you know, put 10 together and almost get a pound, but, um, yeah, these are very easy to travel with, you know, car, plane. I've got them at the office, uh, but I do carry them. And I, I have a couple in my, my gym bag all the time. I'll have some with me in a briefcase. I have some in the back of the car. I mean, is uh, it is it the kind of stuff that you use like when you go camping? Is it is it that? I mean, I'm sure it tastes better and it's better for you. But when you go to the, you know, the Dick Sporting Goods and you're going to go camp and you get a bunch of freeze dried stuff and you know chili right. and stuff, is that what this is? Yeah. Well, in terms of the food being freeze dried, yes, this food is freeze dried. So, you know, to prepare it, you simply add a cup of hot water, seal the bag, shake it up a bit, and wait 12 minutes, and it rehydrates, and you've got a a, a you know, uh, a premier top flight um, uh, macronutrient dense meal. Uh, as it compares to what's Russ, the question, I like the question because when I put these together, I've done, I grew up hiking the Sawtooth and the Tetons. My, I grew up in Idaho. My dad took us boys up into the mountains frequently. So we knew what freeze dried food was. But I, I'll tell you that when I was looking for a nutrition solution, I never thought about it. I never thought about the stuff we bought to eat on the trail. And the reason is because when you're not on the trail, it tastes like crap. It does. And it's the uh, worst. It's the worst. I mean, it's like, and you it, know, what's next? You're going to have the uh, MRE version of this? <laughs> um, like, Mark, you what What kind did you try? What was the, he said you, he sent you some. What did you try? The best one that I tried was the chicken cauliflower with mango. Oh, it was quite tasty. Chicken cauliflower with mango. Okay, that sounds better than the chili with the uh, chipped beef that I <laughs> that I took to Africa one time. Oh um, boy, those will, yeah, those will talk to you, won't they? <laughs> so what? Okay, so he liked that one. That so, and you say you've got gourmet ones. What kind of? What's on the menu? Yeah, so um, Mark is referring to our coconut mango chicken meal, which is dynamite. It's yes. it is fabulous. Uh, we have a country herb chicken, which is uh, like a, a dill, a dill uh, chicken that has mushrooms and potatoes, and green beans. Uh, we have a broccoli cinnamon pork. And people hear that and think cinnamon and pork, but it's fabulous. Or a, a maple mustard pork. Or um, we have a, uh, a turkey chipotle scramble. You know, so lots of, we have our first vegetarian meals. Uh, we call it a red lentil doll. And it is a fabulous mix of lentils and onions and, and uh, turmeric and um, cinnamon and hmm. fennel seeds and raisins. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. So Stan, for me, so, my first question now after hearing all this is, is it like $50, $60 a meal? Is this really expensive? Fortunately, no. Okay. Now these meals uh, are 12 bucks. 12 bucks each. And so to find a, so in, in terms of a, a competitive price for a meal, uh, we're right down the middle of the fairway. In terms of providing real nutrient dense value for a meal, uh, we, we provide an extremely uh, good value. For instance, Rusty, if you go, um, I say, hey, let's go to the grocery store, go to the produce section and choose some fresh fruits and vegetables to make a meal with. And as we're doing that, I'll tell you that everything that you see, all the fruits, all the vegetables, all the berries, everything, all of it uh, nutritionally is compromised by 50 to 70 percent, meaning that 50 to 70 percent of the minerals and vitamins in those fruits and vegetables are gone. And uh, this is one of the value propositions that uh, Elements Mills provides is because when we separate a fruit or a vegetable from its life source, it begins to die. And within three days, uh, for many fruits and vegetables, uh, over half of the vitamins and minerals are gone. And so what we're purchasing at the grocery store does look fresh, but it's been shipped. 
It's been stored for weeks, sometimes for months, sometimes for years. That's part of the transparency of our food supply chain that uh, is opaque, right? It's just not there. So um, getting a nutritional value for the food that you purchase and, and consume, one of the elements, uh, we, we excel at that we ex because we, we actually flash freeze our foods within hours of harvest. Mm -hmm. And we only harvest this food when it's ripe. So the minerals, the vitamin content is exceptionally high. It's not harvested green or prematurely. Everything that we, all that food in that bag, Mark, is flash frozen within a few hours of harvest, whether it's animals or plants. And so we capture all of the enzymes, we capture the vitamins, the nutrients, the minerals, the, the freeze drying process extracts only the water. And well, it leaves, the, it leaves the of, go ahead. I was gonna say one of my friends, she's a competitive athlete and I was showing her the bags and she grabbed your chicken pomodoro. Uh -huh. And she's like, I'm taking this. Um, are your meals primarily for competitive athletes? I mean, who are buying these? Um, yeah, the name of the companies you identified as Elements for Athletes. Uh, most of the people that buy our food want to be healthy. Um, we uh, last year we were uh, 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 Melissa Hartwig and her company Whole Thirty. You mm -hmm. know, gave us uh, judged our food and said, "Man, this is dynamite. It's uh, totally compliant." Um, Spartan races came to us came to me specifically and said, hey, we'd love because they simply hadn't seen anything as clean as and as simple as the whole food meals that, that we had put together. Mark, let me ask so, you a quick question. I don't mean to interrupt, Stan, but uh, yeah, Mark, you're the, the expert in health hacks. Do we need to do all of this? Is he going overboard? I mean, no offense. I'm just asking the, the expert here because, you know, I mean, Pizza Hut's got a lot of good food. So why not just go there or some other, I'll go to some other restaurant. Why should we go and, and get everything as fresh as, as Stan is suggesting? Um, I think the hack, though, for me, a hack is about a shortcut or to save time. And the hardest part, like we all know what to eat, like people that want to be healthy, know that we have to optimize our proteins. We have to eat whole foods. Right. They know that stuff intuitively. What's hard is actually putting in the time and the effort to put all of that in one place and then make something that actually tastes well. So I think the health hack is that everything's in one bag. You don't have to think. And that's what I love. I'm with you on that. I wanted... Um in creating these meals, Mark, it's, that's, that was the biggest challenge was the meal prep. Uh, I have five kids, single dad, you've got work. I mean, everybody's busy and choosing to cook, choosing to shop for the right food uh, to get the, even to get a recipe that you think is going to taste good, then to get the foods to do it, to cook it, to bag it, to refrigerate it, to put it in Tupperwares. I mean, you're going to trade something for that. You're going to mm. trade time for that. And I love to cook. And there are great times when we can, you know, go to the kitchen with the family and cook and have a fabulous time. But that's not always. And so I did want an alternative, Mark, as you say, it's a hack is a shortcut. What we do is take the thought and time out of choosing the food, getting it ready and eating it. And what I, one of the things I like to say, Mark, is that I respect your nutrition time 100 mm percent -hmm. and I can reduce it. I, if you don't have time of the day to eat well, then uh, I, you can still respect your body. You don't have to compromise. You can still have a, a completely nutrient-dense meal uh, to nail your nutrition that day, that meal, um, without the requirement of time. If you had to do it all over again, would you have gone into law or would you have been an entrepreneur from the beginning? I've been an entrepreneurial lawyer from the get-go. Um, I've never been a desk jockey. So uh, just strictly, I've always had something, uh, other pursuits uh, on the side, even as I was lawyering, even at, you know, at the height of my uh, legal career, I've always done some other things. So, Would you give your younger version any type of advice, any, any, um, anything that you've learned through your decades of wisdom? 
I hope I've started to get a little wisdom, right? Applying knowledge in a, an intelligent way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got five kids and what I've lived long enough to learn that it wasn't necessarily what I said that taught them. It's what I did. Uh, what they saw me do. Because I never, I, I never preached nutrition to them. I mean, we, we identified food in the house two different ways. There was food, and that was stuff that, that either came from the earth or was an animal. That was food. Everything else was garbage. That's what we called it because that's what it is. Hmm. So it was kind of fun to, you know, kids raising kids when they say, hey, Dad, can I have some garbage? <laughs> Meaning like some cold cereal or something like that, you know. But it was fun. I, I have learned that, that the kids learn from what we do much more than from what we say. Excellent. Now, if somebody wanted to get your foods, how do they go about doing that? What's the, um, you know, how would they go about, do you, is it over the counter or do they order it from your website? Yeah, so we're strictly a web-based business. And so, uh, everybody, you can go to getyourelements.com to get your elements. So, you go to the website, getyourelements.com. There you'll find a... Uh, uh, you know, photographs of our food. You can click on that. You can see the nutritional chart uh, that's incorporated on the packaging, you know, the USDA uh, nutritional chart. You can see the ingredient list. You can see the macros in each meal. You can see the caloric values. Everything's there. If, I, if I'm going out and I left your my bag of get your elements at home, what one tip or hack would you give me um, when I'm going through my menu and looking at what to eat tonight? Yeah. Well, I can speak, you know, for me, it's I'd fill probably two thirds of my plate with uh, plants. And then the other third, I would have a protein source. I love fish, you know, love beef. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but a good protein source and then uh, lots of lots of plant foods. No, I really stand. I really appreciate your time. Um, any last thoughts or anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Or R Rusty, are you still here? Or are you at I, McDonald's? No, I, I, well, I'm getting ready to go to McDonald's <laughs> after this. Thank you. No, I mean you mentioned get number six. Get, get, get number the, six. Get the number Rusty. six. Um, okay, so so fish is important. You like fish. Uh, you also yeah, fish, uh, a beef. You said which surprises me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so you can eat clean. You just have to yeah. think about it. You have to. And I, I, I got to drop a footnote on the fish because the, there's a study out of three years ago that identified the most toxic food in a grocery store is farm raised salmon. Mm -hmm. So know what you eat, you know. Know, so, your, yeah. know your elements, huh? Well, <laughs> and a lot of people think that eating the tuna sandwich at Subway is healthy. And you actually find out that the tuna sandwich is the worst thing on the menu. You get. You know, Rusty, being aware, asking questions, being inquisitive, it, uh, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. You've seen the Impossible Burger now at Burger King. It's not neat, um, but it's grown in the lab. You know, that's an interesting deal, man. That's it's an interesting place that we're going where we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're growing meat in Petri dishes. Um interesting stuff yeah what a great way to end the program so that's something to think about <laughs> all right like well stanford a graham thank you very much get your elements.com mark l white he's our host go to mark to find out more gentlemen thank you so much and everybody thank, thank you. you make sure you subscribe to uh health hacks with mark l white at itunes and stitcher and google play and iHeartRadio. tell your friends mark l white health hacks thank you very much for being with us today thank you.